there are areas in the country, I think North Carolina obviously is one of them, that the corruption is so large that it's even trickled down to the clerks of the courts. Amen. It is huge here. Okay. The only thing I can even think to do is to contact the state attorney general. He's probably on the payroll, too. He is. We've already been shown to the curb, and I was told, don't find a parking place. Your mother is being escorted to the curb. Don't even bother finding a parking place. We actually got into a conference room. Uh, I don't know what else to do, but the properties have been, I've been told today that bids have gone into the bank's hands. How far can I carry this notice of default and ask for, and the uh, reconveyance? I mean, how bullish can I make this? Well, have you done the first part of the package? The RESPA we did. Pillow. We did the RESPA, and I don't. I don't think we have done the pillow. I have had four illegal foreclosures to handle. They have moved in like the Gestapo on us. I I know this. This is what I we're know trying you to do. At. Yeah, it happens all over. I know it is. It's uh, horrible. Yeah, and now we're homeless, penniless, without income. These were not just residences; they were our business. They were bed and breakfast, lodging facilities. They've been sabotaged to pieces, so they did away with their income first. Then they moved and used this criminal process called cyberstalking to put a lid on us. And then they've done the notary fraud, and we possibly have notary fraud in four states. Yeah, they're called robo-signing. And there's a group down in Florida that specializes in that. I saw it on um, 60 yep. Minutes. Linda yep. Green. <laughs> yep. Well, we've got uh, a section of of substitute trustees, these are all operating under the Mortgage Bankers Association of the Carolinas. It is the lenders and the substitute trustees and the lobbyists. They're all under one umbrella. Yep. And I've tied them all in together. So they're they're passing me around like a pawn. I'm not the property owner. My mother is. But they know I'm the fighter and I'm the researcher. <laughs> and I, I'm, I have no support group here. Do you know of a support group in any part of the eastern United States, especially in North Carolina? Well, I think Terry Lynn might know somebody. Well, I'm desperate for some support here. Terry, Terry are you on the phone? Yeah, uh-huh. Can you help her maybe find somebody? Maybe, maybe our friend that starts with an S could help her. <laughs> <laughs> It starts with what? I'm new to your call. Yeah. Excuse me. Yeah. It's a, um, it's a mutual friend of ours. Yeah. Um, yeah. What I need to do is, uh, let's see. We can wait just a little while. Yeah. Uh, I need okay. to move. Yeah, go ahead and go ahead. and I'm listening. I'm learning. It, okay. this, this, this is horrible what they're doing to people. Yeah. Oh, it's just and, unbelievably and, and And, and, and I... And I stated right right from the beginning, it is because the entire system is corrupt from top to bottom, and it's been uh, it's been leveraged okay. by money. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm the only one who has challenged this dude called Clerk of Court, and he I've caught his hand in the till, and I'm a digital journalist and citizens journalist, and I published that truth, and now we're being victimized, and and it's a vendetta. Yep, yep. I know. Oh, let me let me move on. Um, okay. I'm sorry for, your, for all of your problems, but we're all facing the same problems. So. I know. I just have multiple ones of the same. You do. Thing that <laughs> <laughs> I got a plethora. <laughs> yeah, you have a plethora. And and what was what was your first name again? Vita. V e t a. Okay. And are you um, to say like what town you're near? I did, I'm in Hamptonville. Okay. We like to all refer right. to it as Hampton Hell. <laughs> okay. um, all right. So if you'll just hang on and uh, maybe after after we stop okay. the recording, I can we can actually. Um, well, you're on the computer here. I can. Uh, yes. 
I'll type in if you want to email me, and then that way we can get touch that way as well. So uh, we'll okay. get back on to the next question on uh, from Idaho. And thank you, Lisa, and uh, we'll work on some Carolina folks. Oh, thank you. Someone to help you or someone nearby. We, Like Ron said, we both know. All right, thank you. Thank you. All right, so let's get to Idaho. And um, I wanted to really quick, uh, if you, you want to answer Oxygen Man about the um, Register of Deeds uh, or a Recorder's Office in Australia, um, Frank would be the best one to answer that question. Oh, yeah. And um, there must be some sort of office that, if we can maybe relay it this way, records titles or deeds or ownership for Australia uh, on your um, territory, maybe territory levels or however that would be divided. Um, so if we kind of hinted at maybe a, a little bit of research for you to do until Frank is back next week and you can ask that question uh, of Frank if you would have the uh, information or if you want to go to the forum on the university.ucadia.info. Uh, if you're a member there and you want to type in that question for Frank, that would be an easy way to get that answered as well. Um, so let's see. Idaho's next on the phone. Are you there? Yes, I am. Hey, Ron, how you doing? John, how are you? I'm very good. I got a couple of questions. One, first for your foreclosure package. Uh, would that work on credit cards for the listening audience as far as anybody that, that would have a, a credit card debt, even though it's not a, a foreclosure per se, no. but it is a created debt? No, that won't work. Because remember, okay. all of these documents are recorded in at the county recorder, and as you know, it can only deal with land transactions. Yes. And my second, not necessarily a question, more of a, a comment as far as the uh, I believe it's vetted the, the gal just before me in regards to possibly what she can do is to file a, a criminal complaint with the uh, uh, court and also with the, with the local district attorney, sheriff's office, and all that. Um, I can relate a little bit of my experience. On, if people don't know how to do that, it's a very uh, difficult process. But uh, what I found out after going, after filing the criminal complaint with the court and giving copies of it to the uh, county prosecutor or district attorney's office and also giving copies to the, to the sheriff's office and speaking to a, a major in the, in the sheriff's department, no one wants to touch it with a 10-foot pole. And the, the court, even though the I'm in Idaho, the Idaho Code says you know, that it, uh, if you file something, eventually it will get before magistrate, but the magistrates, they won't do anything about it. The only way you can get, shall we say, some action actually done is when it's filed in the uh, the county that I'm in, they have a criminal side and a civil side. So when I filed it, I asked for a immediate hearing. This was I did this like about uh, 8, 30, 9 o'clock in the morning when the, when the courthouse first opened. I filed it and I asked, I, I want to be able to see a judge today, right now. And how the courts work here is they have a presiding judge who handles all the immediate issues. And so within about... Uh, 20 minutes, I was in a courtroom with a judge and a court clerk, and they heard heard my case. It was a it was about an attorney who lied in in an affidavit. I had him dead to rights, and they wouldn't go with the uh, wording that I had had in there. But uh, I was able to to get before a, a judge, and I was surprised that I did. But uh, People want to be able to try that to be able to break the presumption when you go up against these people that they're breaking the law. You have to break that presumption and actually file a, a criminal complaint against them. But getting that into their system, that's the difficult part, where they have complete and absolute control over who they deem to be a criminal. So all I can say is uh, I wish everybody you know, good luck and pursue it, but have all your, your evidence it, if you can get on in and get to a judge, you need to have all your evidence, just like a regular trial. You can be sworn in everything, but have it uh, all, all presented there, copies of every document that you have. I wasn't expecting that, but uh, 
I should have my dictionaries there to be able to show the, the word differences that uh, they lied on. But that's all, unfortunately, water under the bridge. They won't touch it afterwards, but uh, right. people go, go forward on that. Yep. Well, that's some good advice, John. It's been difficult for citizens to get criminal complaints against any of the real criminals. Absolutely. Obviously, they don't, they don't want to take out their own criminals. Well, it's like a professional courtesy. A shark won't bite another shark, so to speak. <laughs> Unless he's bleeding. <laughs> right? Absolutely. And then they, they, they smell blood, though they will possibly go for the kill. But yep. uh, we we have to definitely be, be diligent in our... Uh, and I'll work in as competent as we possibly can. Also, just for, the, for an update for people that have uh, heard me before, in my case, I had down in, in California. I can give a little, little update. I was the one that, that mentioned uh, I found out my, uh, my mom had a conservatorship case down in California, and the, the judge there in Los Angeles County had literally been receiving bribes from the county of Los Angeles. And I found this out through... Um, a website that was, uh, unfortunately, the name escapes me out, but the, the website that basically revealed that uh, the judges, even though they're state judges, they were getting money from from the county. Well, I got all the Freedom of Information Act requests from the county auditor had had proof dead rights that they they were doing this, but they basically denied everything. They wouldn't recuse themselves. They wouldn't do anything. They just rolled right over me like I wasn't there. So um, you can try it. You you can. Do what is right. That's it's the honorable thing to do. You know, as as Frank says, you know, getting getting criminals to obey the law is very difficult. Yep. Well, thanks for that comment, John. Well, hang in there, Ron. I know you're doing a great job. Thank you. See you later. Right. Yep. Thank Bye. you, John. All right. Hey, we'll take one more call and then we have to move on. All right. Let me get to uh, guest eleven because we are. And over here in the chat, yes, eleven Hello. is here. Hi. Hello. Hello. Yes. Hi, this is Roberto calling from Canada. Hi, Roberto. Hi. I just wanted to offer up um, something for everyone out there and ask your opinion on it. Have you ever approached um, the mortgage or foreclosure from the route of basically demanding the note? Yes, a lot of people have down here, and it's not the note that is binding you. It is the con. It's the mortgage contract that's doing it. But isn't that the note? Like your signature, isn't it? Your signature. Well, that's, that's what you do. That's you why we do the revocation of power of attorney to undo all of that. Hmm. The note uh, is well, what actually funded the transaction. Yes. But it's the mortgage, the the paperwork that's contained within the mortgage package is what's binding you. But do uh, they not still need the original promissory note as a proof of their bona fide claim? No, no. They have a contra- another contract working in the background that's that's hooking you. And it's so that it tenant a- it's a tenant relationship. What Frank uh, tried to explain, I think, two, three months ago. Hmm? Yeah, you're a tenant on your own land. Hmm. So even and if they don't produce the, the original um, promissory note, then it, they can still proceed. Yep. What you're saying. And they have. Yeah. They literally have. Nobody. Well, I, know heard, they, huh? I know that they have only because... Um, people basically don't stand on their claim that they produce it because ap- apparently in a lot of uh, precedent cases, um, some people who demanded it, and it was ruled against every time against the banks that if they do not produce the original wedding signature, which is a proof of the, of the contract, uh-huh. they have it. even when they have a deed of trust, the right. deed of trust still ties into the promissory note. Now, that in itself alone um, is not um, just going to get you out of the water. Um, from what I have been working with a few people, it's basically a new twist on that. Okay. But you have to stay on point because they try to not. And what you can do is, um, and a couple have been so far, I don't want to say it's a success. It's been um, on a couple of cases where 
been about a year. Now, like you said, it's a stalemate. It's right. not that it's free and clear. 